means the same as plus. It means the same as the word and. So the reality is this is two section, two, I don't want to use the word section. I don't want to confuse you. This is two parcels of land. So you cannot use this trick unless you understand you can use it here and here, and then you must add the numbers together. So this one, you got two, four, and four. That is 32, right? Mm -hmm. Plus eight. How many times does 32 go into 640? Wouldn't it be plus eight? We're not done yet. This is just this section. This is just this parcel of land right here. All right. That was bad. And you've got to figure this parcel. So this is two times four is eight. Eight goes into 640 80 times. So this parcel of land is 20 acres. This parcel of land is 80 acres. But you've got this plus. So this parcel of land this guy owns is 100 acres. Okay. okay. Cool. The key to this whole thing is this word or this symbol right here. That semicolon. Watch out for that trick. They will throw that in there and you have to treat it like two pieces of equation. Again. North half of the north half of the northwest quadrant and the northwest half of the southwest quadrant. How many acres are in that? Hundred and twenty. Okay, we have an answer of one twenty. Let's figure the denominator two, two, and four. That's sixteen. Two times two times four is sixteen. Yes. It goes in six hundred and forty. Forty times. Forty times. That is just this okay. portion. We are now have to do this one. Two and four. That equals 80. That's just this portion. But this right here says we've got to end it. So it's plus the 80 equals 120 acres. Whoever said 120, I think it was Shauna. Very good. Not me. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Nicole. Oh, thank you. Very good. So are we good with this right now at 120 acres? Yep. All right. Be prepared for one of those. Then the third method they talk about is virtually just the lot and block. And this would be that northwest quadrant of the northwest quadrant of the northwest quadrant that this is that 10 acres remember that we just drew we just zoomed in and here what they do is because you can't use the rectangular survey less than 10 acres they just make these the developer would make lots in here you know he would just section it off and call it lot so that would be lot one of Sherman Commons. Of, Which one did we just do? What was the one we was just doing? What was that called? That was the government rectangular survey. Okay, that was the government survey. Okay. Right. Making sure. And the government survey can only go down to 10 acres. Remember that smallest block in the corner? Yes. <laughs> Uh, 
don't know why this is not doing this for me like it should. Back to the section. We had this section up there, remember? Yes. And that was the northwest quadrant of the northwest quadrant of the northwest quadrant. And we all agreed that that was 10 acres. And we could do the math. Four times four times four is 64. Divided into 640 gives us 10 acres. The problem is we don't live on 10 acres. We live on bigger or smaller than 10 acres. So all I did in this particular case was blow that 10 acres up. And now we've got a lot and a block and where he determines, he being the developer, could be a she, lot numbers, and my house I'm going to build is right there on lot one of Sherman Commons, and they name them. <laughs> uh, and then here you would put the Northwest Quadrant, and you would put that whole rectangular survey because it is fitting Right in here is where we're talking about. Right in there. I don't believe there's a lot of questions. Remember, there's seven or eight questions out of this sec out of this area. So there's four or five different things they could ask. My my money is on the map. <coughs> Money is on the math. If I were a bet man, I'd do that question. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I just have a quick question. How is that one considered the northwest again? Because for some reason, I'm getting mixed up with the northwest and the northeast. Because I thought that would be considered northeast for some reason. Good. Good <laughs> catch. I just see that was a trick that I was trying to catch you on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I got ahead of myself. You get the star bonus for the day. That is the <laughs> North. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. That would be the Northwest of the Northwest of the Northwest. Okay. Sorry, good catch though. Now it just got carried up too fast. In, a, in actuality, any of these 10 acres would look like that. Okay. All right, which is a good point to understand. This is the 10 acre section right there. In theory, all of these would, would have, you know, a lot and block method in there where they would do, because every one of those 10 acres, they can't do anything. So I'm drawing just little roads here as an example. So each, that's how you get those housing additions beside the, each other. Because here may be one, and that 10 acres, I'm trying to figure out. So you got this road that goes in there, and here's a road like Sherman. And then there's another housing addition and it goes over to the, this next house. There's the road and then it goes that way. And this guy builds a housing addition in here and here and there's one over here. So they would all have a lot and block inside of those 10 acres because the government rectangular survey does not allow for anything smaller than 10 acres. You could, in theory, here's a road and then here's a road. We could, in theory, have that whole Meets and bounds in there. 
Remember the meets and bounds we just talked about a minute ago where it went 200 feet and then it went at an angle to the creek? And here's the creek. Oh. So there's the original. Here's the original plot and, or meets and bounds that we did at the very beginning where it went at an angle to the center of the creek and followed the creek back. So you could have lot and block, or you could have lot and block inside of it, or you could have the meets and bounds inside of the government survey set because you can't do anything smaller than 10 acres. Okay. Thumbs up. Uh, livable land measurements. Let's do a little bit of land. Equations. This one come in the math, but we can do it here too. All right. So let's do some math. I know you guys will love that. So one acre. Everybody said a minute ago, is 43,560 square feet. That is the logo or the symbol that means square foot. So if I had a piece of property that was simply 300 feet by 500 feet, my question is, How many acres are in that? Three times five is 15. One, two, three, four zeros. That would be 150,000 square feet. If you took 150,000, divided it by 43,560, so we all get our calculator out that you will probably be given when you take the test. You will get that this guy has 3.44 acres. Please do that math to make sure you got that number because as you saw earlier, I could be prone to making a mistake. Anybody yes. get that number? Yes. Yes. All right. Two of us did. We're right. Now, let's do another one. How many of you guys hate story problems? Well, unfortunately, your career is all story problems. Because what you're going to get is a guy going to come to you, a seller, and say, I want to sell my 4.3 acres at $2 a square foot. You may have to end up doing that. But before we do that, let's do one other problem. How many acres are in that? There is a trick to this. And the trick is to realize that this is a combination of a rectangle and a triangle. So once again, this rectangle is how big? 100 by 200 square feet. So two, one, two, three, four zeros. 
but that's just this part. You've got to add this part. If this part here is 300 feet and this part is 200 feet, how long is the base of this triangle right here? It would then be 100 feet, right? So it's 100 feet wide. It's still 100 feet tall on that top because I wrote it over here. So this triangle is 100 times 100. But to realize a triangle is half a square, so you multiply it by one half. That's 5,000. That's this triangle. So that area has a 25,000 square foot area. Did everybody see how I get that? They love doing this kind of tricks to you. Because in theory, they could do the same thing and make it kind of look like this. Realize that you have a triangle here, a triangle there, and a square. So you would get some area plus this area plus that area. So watch for that trick too. Thumbs up. Are we good? Do we need to do another example? Go back to that, that so I can finish writing it down. I'm sorry? Could you go back to the actual problem? I wanted to finish writing it to figure out, make sure I had it right. Thank you. Yeah, another one wouldn't hurt. Okay, we'll do another one. Let's give her a second. Okay, you can go ahead. All right. So if I had this, I'm gonna let's change it. Let's make it really fun. This may be a little more challenging. If that's 500 feet from there to there, this is 200 feet. And let's make this 50 feet. This would be 50 feet from here to here and 50 feet from there to there. All you really need to do is realize there are three sections here. You've got that little area here. You can draw that triangle. So you've got this block, that block, and that block. So this first block is 50 by 50. Everybody see that? The second block is 200 feet by how tall is this? It would be 50 feet here and 50 feet there. So it's 100 foot tall. And then the third one is the triangle. Oh, well, we know it's 100 foot. That's the same as that one. And that width is 
300 feet, that's a little deceiving because if it's 200 feet here, that distance has got to be 300. But it's a triangle, so it would be half. If you can do this, you'll be able to do any of them. That's 2,500. That's 20,000. What is that? Uh, 300 times 100 is 30,000, but it's 15. So it's 15,000. You would just add them together. Somebody help me and tell me if they got the same number. Uh, quick question for number two. Is it because you divided or we had to do half and half to get that 100 instead of? I got 100 because That's half and half. this one here. I told you this here is 50 feet, right? All right. But this, see, this also tells you here from here to here is also it's 50 another 50. Feet. Okay. So from here all the way up to the other boundary from here to there is the 50 plus 50 which is that 100 right there okay so then the 500 doesn't go we don't have to worry about the 500 then the only thing the 500 helps you is it tells you this distance okay because you got to take 500 here, minus the 200 right from there okay. to there is 200 and from so you know that from there to there is 200 so there from there to there has to be the 300 that's where this 300 okay. comes in right here they love doing that where they give you the link on one side and the other so you have to figure out what that triangle is cool so question, would it be more to this question like on the test? So I'm just like looking at page 78 and I see like convert this or times it by a dollar thirty-eight this, per square foot. Yeah, we're gonna take another step. Oh, okay. Now if I told you if we've got this, this is a little intense, but we did this so you get it. So now the farmer says to you, Shauna, I want to list my property. There it is but I want to list it at $16,000 an acre. Tell me what the list price is on this property. I want to list it at $16,000 an acre. Hmm. So we're going to list it at sixteen thousand dollars per acre well you've done the math and you got your square footage so mm -hmm. now what do you have to do Divide it. convert that square footage to acreage And this is a really poor choice. I did uh, these numbers were on the fly. So what you end up with is this actually being only point eight six acres, right? Yep. Yep. So you get the list price. of $13,000. We
We should have, that should make sense to you because this square footage here is actually less than the whole acre. An acre is 42,560. We only got 37,000. So it's not even a full acre. So this 0.86 should make sense. You've only got 0.86 of an acre and that's less than 16,000. Cool? Yes. All right. So if the list price is a million five hundred thousand and he has eight point seven five acres, how much is it listed for per acre? How much is the per acre price on this property? I got one seventy one four two eight fifty seven. Thank you. That's what I got. <laughs> One point five million divided by eight point seven five tells you it's one hundred and seventy one thousand four hundred and twenty eight dollars and fifty seven cents per acre. Oh, OK. The easy way to remember this is dollars per acre, right? This tells you which one to put on top of the division and which one to put on the bottom. People all the time get confused. Which one do I divide? Remember your units. You want dollars per acre. So put the dollars on top, the 8.75 on the bottom. And this is the number you get. Cool? Yes. All right. The next little piece they want us to talk about deals with water rights. So let's go over here and talk about water rights. Remember, there are two types of water as far as we're concerned. You've got a river, right? And there's the middle line for the river. But in a river, we've got two types in a river. And with a river, what rights do we have? No. The rights. Riparian rights. Riparian rights. And if I told you that the owner owned to the middle of this river, what type of river would that be? That's non navigable. navigable. It is a non navigable river, like a creek or mm -hmm. a stream because they can't get a boat down. And think about this. If you, if the government can't put a boat down it, they're not going to take care of it. They want you to take care of it. So therefore you own to the middle of the river and this dude over here owns to the middle of the river. Both you guys are taking care of that. But if the government can get a boat down it, they're only going to allow you to own to here. This guy would own to here <laughs> take care of the boats going down the river. That means it's navigable. So this means, yes, I can get a boat down it, and no.